Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. This week, we're going to get started on working with APIs. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and that's basically a way for two or more computer programs to communicate with each other. In our case, we're going to be using APIs to download data. So you remember in the last lesson, we uploaded data into R from a, a flat file. And you remember how messy that process was. So we had data that needed to be reshaped. Data were in character format when we wanted it to be in numeric format. Uh, we had messy variable names, uh, etc. cetera. Um, the benefit of downloading data from an API is that a lot of that wrangling is already taken care of for you. Okay, so we're gonna be working with WB Stats, which is for downloading World Bank data. Uh, and the end goal is to have uh, a data set with data from the World Bank that we can use then to do some nice visualizations. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So if you go uh, into our studio, let's go ahead and start a new Quarto document for this module. We'll go to New File, Quarto Document. Uh, and like last time, we're just going to call this something simple like module 1.2. Uh, author is optional, but let's go ahead and put our name there. Create that. Okay, and there we have our Porto document. And we can go ahead and delete out this stuff from the template. Okay, so the first part of this is going to be to download some data uh, from the World Bank. So we can just call this uh, downloading data from an API. So uh, here we're going to be downloading data using WB Stat, the WB Stats package um, from the World Bank API. So uh, let's go ahead and just put some descriptive text in here. Uh, in the first part of this module, we are going to be downloading data from the World Bank using the WB Stats package. Okay. Uh, from here, we can put in a code chunk. Uh, we can name the code chunk uh, label. WB stats. Again, we do this in case uh, we get stuck somewhere, there's some error and we have to know which code chunk the errors coming from or, or if we want to reuse a code chunk. So here uh, now let's put a comment in load packages and we'll go ahead and load our packages in library WB stats uh, library dplyr and if you haven't already installed look at the pre-work uh, section of the module and go ahead and install wb stats if you haven't done that already so those are the three packages we're going to be using here um, okay so we're going to have to decide on some indicators that we want to download using the api and for that we're going to need the indicator code um, and there are a couple of ways to do that so let's put a section in here called uh, locate indicators okay and i'll show you the manual way to do it and then a way to do it using the wb stats package uh, the manual way to do this is just to go to the world development indicators website so we can look for world development indicators and here we can just go to series and we can look next to the indicators view the metadata and it'll tell us up here what that indicators code is going to be so let's say we wanted to find female labor force participation rates that we were working with last time so we can write in or search for labor force participation and we were looking 15 to 64 modeled ILO estimate labor force participation rate female percent of female population that's it and then we can see that this is the code for female labor force participation rates. Okay, but there's another way to do this though, using the WB stats package. Um, uh, there is a function um, called WB underscore search that we can use to locate indicators. Okay, so let's go ahead 
and type in that code here. So we can do FLFP underscore indicators. WB search. And we can search for a female labor force. Okay. And that's going to store this these search results in this object here, FLFP indicators. Okay. And then what we can do is we can print that FLFP indicators and we can tell it how many we want to print so it doesn't just print out the default uh, however many um, lines. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this and see what that looks like just so you can get a sense of how to search for indicators using this function. Oh actually it doesn't come out so well there so let's let's take this print function make this a little bit bigger Okay, yeah, so here's what it looks like over on the console. We get the indicator ID, um, a basic description of uh, the indicator, what it measures, and then uh, some notes on the indicator which get cut off here, but if we were to make this window a little bit bigger, we could see those notes as well. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and next, um, let's comment this out. Yes, we won't need to necessarily use that again. Um, and let's say we want to look for a different uh, indicator and let's say I have a feeling that the World Bank has some information, has some data on the percentage of members of parliament who are female, who are women. Um, and so I want to create an object where I'm going to store a search on the percentage of women in Parliament. So let's just search for women in Parliament. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and run that. And then I'm going to print that. Okay. Okay. And um, there we see that there's one indicator, uh, basically. Uh, we can see it more clearly if we do it in the console like last time. Okay, uh, there's basically one indicator on the proportion of seats held by women in national parliaments. Okay, and that is the code for that. All right, so now that we have our codes, um, we can go ahead and download the data. We can use those codes to download the data, okay? So the next step is going to be to store a list of indicators, uh, which we just looked up. Um, so we're going to store those indicators and then subsequently use those to download data for those indicators. So let's go ahead and add a comment here, store the list of indicators. in an object and the object is going to be called indicators um, and we're going to use the combine function here because we have more than one uh, indicator FLFP equals and our first indicator was that we looked up for female labor force participation, sl.tlf.cact.fe.zs. So intuitive. <laughs> uh, and then the second one is women underscore rep equals sg.gen.parl.zs. Okay. And notice that for this to work, um, to store it in an object with a combined function, you have to put the, um, the variable names in parentheses there. Okay, so that's a little detail uh, that you'll need to remember. 
Um, then from here, we're going to go ahead and download the data. Um, so this is women. And we're going to store it in an object called women underscore EMP. And we're going to use a new function. And this one is WB underscore data. Um, this is the function from the WB stats package that downloads the data from the World Bank API. Okay, so WB underscore data indicators. Um, and we're going to take the most recent 50 values, okay, um, which would be the data for the last 50 years. And here uh, we're going to pipe into a select verb. Um, and the select verb is a dplyr verb that uh, either selects or deselects columns. In this case, we're going to remove the ISO 2C country code um, because we don't need it. Um, so I'm putting select exclamation point, which stands for not. So select exclamation point ISO 2C, and that will remove the ISO 2C country code. Okay, we're going to drop that from the from the data frame. So then we're going to pipe that into another dplyr verb, which is rename. And rename basically renames columns. And the first parameter is the new name of the column. And then you put an equal sign, and then you put the old name. So currently it's called date, and we want to switch it to year. And then from there, we're going to uh, do another pipe operator here. And we are going to do a mutate verb. Okay, which you're already familiar with. So in this case, we're going to round our two variables, female labor force participation and women's representation, to the nearest hundredth. Okay, um, so that there's not like these really not long numbers after the decimal point. Uh, so we want to um, replace basically FLFP, which we already have in the data frame, and we want to do round to fraction FLFP. Okay, we're going to round FLFP and put it in a new object, um, or we're going to replace FLFP with a rounded version of it. Denominator equals 100. Okay, and then we're going to do that one more time with women's representation. Okay, and then finally, we're going to go ahead and we're going to glimpse that data. Okay, let's go ahead and run this, see if it works. Oh, I misspelled denominator, denominator. Let's try it again. And there we go. Uh, there's our data. Um, and we can see that we have the ISO 3C country code, uh, the country, country name, the year, and women's representation and female labor force participation. Notice that these data are tidy. Um, the year uh, and the two variables that we downloaded are in numeric format. Uh, the country code and the country uh, name are in, are in uh, string or character format. And um, the variables are in the columns. Each column represents a variable. Each row represents an observation. Each cell represents a value. Um, so those are tidy data. Uh, and uh, we can just have a quick look. We can just open the data frame. And we can see, it was kind of hard to see with the glimpse function. Uh, all we saw was NAs, but we can see that there's plenty of data in here. Not every country has data for every year, um, but our data look pretty good. Um, nice and rounded, um, numeric format, tidy, etc. Okay, um, let's go ahead and uh, I've been living dangerously here. Let's go ahead and save this. Should have saved this earlier. 
Okay, and we can render it just to make sure everything's working. Okay, and this is what it should look like. All right, so that's it. As you can see, this is a lot easier than working with flat file once you get a hang of the API um, concept. In the next lesson, we're going to be learning, uh, we're going to be using a different API. We're going to work with the VDEM data API, and uh, we're going to be learning some new dplyr verbs.